Hi, so in this example, we are going to demonstrate the Newton's law of cooling using separation of variables. Now you may have seen this in your first semester calculus, but in here, um, we kind of just gave you a formula back then to discuss um, the relationship between the exponential function and the derivative. Um, but here we get to actually use and understand better this type of problem. And Newton's law of cooling is always like a, group, a good one. Um, so for example, and this one is a liquid base of an ice cream, um, and it has an initial temperature of 93 degrees Celsius before it is placed in a freezer where the constant temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, negative 20 degrees Celsius. And then after one hour, that liquid base of ice cream has cooled. So essentially they made ice cream, and it, if you ever made it, it's liquid base when you put it in the freezer and then it turns into a solid, more solid form of ice cream. So after one hour, it the base has decreased to 57 degrees. So of course you want it to be cold about, I would say a little less than 30 degrees, right? You really need to get it frozen. Um, and then, so here we wanna use Newton's law of cooling to solve the initial value problem and then determine what the temperature in Celsius degrees um, of the ice cream base after two hours it's sitting in a freezer of negative 20 degrees Celsius. So there's a couple of things we need to note here. So the first thing I put here is from our notes, the Newton's law of cooling. We, we're gonna go ahead and set up this exact equation and use separation of variables to solve for t in, with respect to time, little t. We do know that t sub s is the temperature of the surroundings, the constant temperature of the surroundings. And, um, and we do know t is just the temperature at any time, time t after the object is placed in that constant surrounding temperature. And then k is just the constant coefficient since there is a um, direct relationship between time and the temperature. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing I'm gonna do is probably write some notes. The first thing I see is the initial temperature here is 93 degrees Celsius. So that means that T of t at time zero, when it starts, the, when the ice cream base goes into the freezer, it's at 93 degrees Celsius. And then the surrounding temperature that that ice cream base is sitting in is going to be um, negative 20 degrees Celsius. So make sure you add that negative because that means it's below zero, right? And the equation has to be more uh, exact. Okay, and then the last piece is that it said after one hour, the temperature of the ice cream decreased to 57 degrees. So this means that T of one is 57 degrees Celsius. So we have quite a few things happening. And what we, all in all, in the end, we wanna know after two hours, what is that temperature? So it seems such a simple question, but yet it's going to take a, a little bit of our of work. So the first thing I want to do is set up my differential equation. So d capital T little d little t is equal to the constant k times t minus the surrounding temperature of negative 20 degrees. So notice it's going to be a t minus minus. So therefore now we get d dt dt d little t equal to k times t plus 20. Let's go ahead and separate the variables. We see capital T on the left side and we'll have the little t over on the right. So therefore we'll get um, dt over t plus 20. We'll divide each side by that t plus 20 factor. And then on the right side, we'll go ahead and multiply and get k dt on the right side. And therefore, we can go ahead and now we have separation of variables and we can integrate each side with respect to their variables. So on the left side, it'll be with respect to capital T. And as we know from our notes, this is just going to be the natural log of absolute value t plus 20 equal to, here we're gonna have k t plus C, something linear, right? Okay, and then to solve for capital T, because that was our goal, is to get a function there, let's go ahead and take base E to each side. 
And that way we can go ahead and see that we'll have absolute value of t plus 20 on the left and that will be equal to e to the kt plus c. Now we know here with um, this e here to the c as from our notes, right, it's just going to be some bigger constant. So we end up getting capital T plus 20 in absolute value equal to capital C e to the kt. And that's just um, product rule of exponents, and that's in your notes. Great. So now um, it looks like we know temperature at this point is, is going to be positive, right? The temperature itself. So we can go ahead and grab it out of um, the absolute value and then take 20 uh, and subtract it from each side. So this way we get T of little t equal to C e to the kt minus 20. So then he go, here is our equation, right? So that's our starting point. Notice there are a few things that are missing, right? So we are missing the constant C, whatever that is, and then that K rate. I assume that rate is going to look a little different just because we're, we're cooling something down um, in the freezer, right? So um, the first thing we want to note is I'm going to go ahead and grab this piece. See if I can just grab it, copy, and bring it up here. So the first thing I want to note up here from all my s information is the only thing I've used so far has been the surrounding temperature. But other than that, I have not used the T of zero value or the T of one value. So I, the first thing I want to do is find that constant C, and I'm going to go ahead and take that initial value of 93 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and use the fact that T of zero is equal to 93 degrees. So I'll check that off. And therefore, we get T of zero equal to C e to the K times zero minus 20. So we're just replacing t with 0. We know that t of 0 is 93, so that's 93 equal to c e to the k times 0 is e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, so it's c minus 20. And go ahead and add 20 to each side, and we go ahead and get 113 um, as our constant um, coefficient in front of e. So now our function becomes a little bit more clear, right? It's t of t equals 113 e to the kt minus 20. Okay, so once again, we still find ourselves needing k. So now um, we'll go ahead now and find k. So in this part here, we're, we went ahead and find c. So let me put this is 1i. 2i, and then 3i. So the, this is the order of which you should be um, solving this problem. So to find k, I go back to my repository of given information and see that the only one I haven't used now is the t of 1. So now I know I'm going to use that to find k. So I'm going to go ahead and check this off. And I'm just going to put here, I, I use this to find k. I use this to find C, and then here, this was in the beginning, um, in the beginning of the problem, right? That's what we began with. So here I'm going to have T of 1 is equal to 57 degrees. Okay, so um, now I have T of 1 is equal to 113 e to the um, K times 1 minus 20. Um, and um, we do know t of 1 is 57, so 57 is equal to 113 e to the k times 1, which is just k minus 20. Go ahead and add 20 to each side. You get 77, and that's equal to 113 e to the k. And now you can see it's just an algebra problem, I'm sure. So 77 over 113 is equal to e to the k. And we can see that the natural log of this quotient, 77 over 113, is equal to k. So now that we found k, we pretty much have our function. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put a number 4 and then just go ahead and complete the function. And so here I'm going to have t of t is equal to 113 
e to the natural log of 77 over 113 times t minus 20. So I just want you to notice that I actually did not um, estimate it. I didn't put it in my calculator. I really don't approximate anything until the end. It's just who I am. It's just, I'm a, you know, I'm applied, I was an applied math major, you know, and I just always know that we leave that approximation till the very end. And so, and from the notes, we know that this actually reduces to something a little nicer. So I would go ahead and check your notes for that in the lecture. And I show how we get 113 times, this base actually ends up coming down and it becomes 77 over 113 as the base to the t power. So that t power still stays up there and then this argument on the natural log becomes the base. And we get minus 20 at the end. So there's our full function. Yay. And now, what were we doing this all for? <laughs> so now we go back up and we notice that our whole point was to actually find after two hours, what was the temperature in that freezer. And essentially what we want is to eat the ice cream, right? So after two hours, is it ready yet? So let's see what the temperature would be after two hours, now that we have our full function. So now um, we're gonna have the finale is now we're gonna find T when the time little t is equal to two. So we have t of little two, I'm sorry, t of little t, which is t of two, equal to 113 times 77 over 113 to the second power, put that there, minus 20. And of course, you can go ahead and use a calculator for this. We'll go ahead and use um, an online calculator like Desmos. All right, so here's our Desmos and I'll just put in um, this equation here on this right side in here. So we're gonna get 113 times 77 over 113 to the second power minus 20. And then of course you have the decimal approximation, but here is the rational number right here at the left side, they have a little fraction option. So we can see that the actual rational number is 3669 over 113. And then in our question, it specifically says to approximate and round to two decimal places. So um, here we see, if I click unclick it, we get two decimal places, so 32.47, and again, degrees Celsius. All right, and then of course we can scroll up and see that that is the correct answer. And therefore, after two hours, the ice cream is at 32.47 degrees.